Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. And in this video is going to be the uh, high level overview part two. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, have a very, very high level overview of the storage services within IBM Cloud, the AI and machine learning services, the analytics services, and also the blockchain services. So without further ado, um, let's head on over to the IBM Cloud. Okay, so here I am in my account at cloud.ibm.com. In fact, I'm in the catalog, so I've uh, just uh, clicked catalog up there. So, um, so we're going to go through and, and look at some more of these services. So we're going to start off with, with storage. So I'm just going to click storage there. And you can see we've got seven items coming up in the, uh, in the storage uh, category. So first of all, we've got block storage for VPC. So the, again, this is for virtual private cloud and, and it's block storage. So it's, uh, partitions are block storage that you can create um, to use against your, your VPC. So there's a video on that later on in the series. Uh, moving on then to some classic infrastructure storage. So we've got block storage again. So again, uh, similar to uh, to block storage for VPC. This is our SCSI based storage, um, which you can then attach to your classic infrastructure, so your classic virtual machines, or your um, or, or any bare metal servers that you might want to create. Uh, we've also got file storage. So this is NFS based storage, and again, this is uh, this is for classic infrastructure, uh, which includes virtual machines and also bare metal servers. We then have um, a, a, a utility, I suppose, called um, IBM Cloud Backup. So this is a backup solution that allows you to well, effectively backup your um, your virtual servers under classic infrastructure as well as your bare metal servers under uh, classic infrastructure. And I guess it's uh, term storage because obviously as part of the backup solution, you've got storage underneath that. Next, we have something called um, data movement. So if you or mass data migration. So if you have um, lots and lots of data on premises that you actually need to move into the cloud. Um, that can take an awful long time to complete over the internet if you've basically got some like an SFTP um, type um, of, of data movement, trying to migrate that data into the cloud. That can take a long time if you've got lots of data. So in mass data migration, uh, what you do is you, uh, you're effectively ordering a storage device from IBM or, or devices from IBM, depending on how much storage you've actually got to move. Um, and uh, what you then do is, is actually plug this uh, this mass data migration device into your network or into your server. And then you, um, you effectively copy the data onto that mass data migration device. You then send that data, that, that device back to IBM. We then plug that into, our, uh, into the IBM Cloud network and then pull the data back off. Um, so that it's it's there and available within your account, and then obviously we go through the through the um, process of actually securely wiping that device as well, so none of your data moves on, uh, stays on there. So again, if you need to move data into the cloud and you've got lots of it, then mass data migration is a really good and fast way to do that. Okay, we then have a, a couple of other uh, storage products. So very quickly, we've got something called DB2 Warehouse. So so this is uh, kind of like an analytics tool as well. So we might see that when we uh, when we look at analytics in in a in a few moments as well. But basically, it's a it's a data warehouse uh, uh, running under DB2. Okay, and then we've got object storage. So object storage is a really great way to um, actually store um, unstructured data within the cloud. It's it's very very um, cheap storage as well. Um, so if you've got cloud native applications and those cloud native applications actually need to start storing. Um, objects, then object storage is a good place to do that. You can always use object storage to do things like um, storing um, archives of data, um, storing maybe backup files, those kinds of things. So basically object storage is really great for, as I said, unstructured data. It's it's very, very cheap and also it's, it's um, pretty much infinite as well. You don't really need to think too hard about scaling um, your object storage. It will just grow and grow and grow um, as you need it. It's an important type of storage within cloud. And again, there's some videos later on um, uh, delving into object storage in a bit more detail. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's storage. So let's now go and have a look at our um, AI and machine learning services. So what you'll notice in here is that a lot of the services here um, are, are called Watson. So Watson is uh, is, a, is an IBM brand name for, uh, for our artificial intelligence um, or AI um, products. So let's go and have uh, so let's go and quickly talk a, a little bit more about each of those. So let's kick off with Watson Assistant. So Watson Assistant is um, a way to, 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 to build chatbots. 
So if you're interested in creating chatbots, then uh, Watson System Assistant is a really powerful tool for quickly and easily building uh, chatbots with intelligence built into them. Next up, we have um, Watson Studio. And Watson Studio is really about um, machine learning and deep learning that kind of helps you um, accelerate, I suppose, um, getting artificial intelligence into your, into your applications and into your business. And I guess that all helps drive innovation and uh, basically provide you with a suite of tools um, and an environment uh, to, to enable developers and data scientists uh, to, actually, um, to actually collaborate and get AI into applications. Okay, so next up we have a nota for uh, clinical data. So um, this allows you to use uh, natural language processing uh, to analyze text and to um, you know, basically extract, normalize and code medical content concepts uh, within it. So if, again, if you're in the uh, sort of medical sciences um, area, then uh, this might be a tool that, that, that could really interest you. And next we have compare and comply. And this allows you to actually read in different documents uh, and then actually compare those documents so that much, much more quickly you can see the differences between two different documents and it will then highlight the uh, you know important elements of that document. So for instance, um, if you've got um, two, two different documents which are maybe contracts and maybe they're the different revisions of a particular contract, then what you could do is read it into compare and comply. Compare and comply will then point out the differences in the two documents and uh, you know that can then uh, identify, I suppose, um, you know areas where there's where there are slight differences you might otherwise miss, and um, you know those slight differences can actually you know pose um, quite big differences, I suppose, when it comes to uh, comes to different contracts. Okay, next we have discovery, and this allows you to add a cognitive search and content analytics engine um, to uh, to your applications, and it allows you to identify things like patterns and uh, you know trends and actual insights into your data so that's what discovery does then we have a knowledge catalog a knowledge catalog allows you to simplify data science and data compliance and it makes your data easy to find and share uh, whilst it uh, are pretty much allowing you to uh, control access to it okay next we have uh, knowledge studio so knowledge studio allows you to teach watson the language of your domain um, with uh, with machine learning modules uh, they'll actually identify entities and relationships that are unique to your industry. So if, for instance, you're, you're in the legal profession, then uh, this is uh, a one way that you can actually teach uh, what's in the language of the legal profession, for example. So next we have language translator. So a uh, language translator, it pretty much does what it says. So um, you can uh, translate different texts uh, in one language to another uh, using language translators. There's, there's quite a lot of languages available underneath that. Next up, we have machine learning. And machine learning is a, um, a service uh, that uh, makes it easy for developers and data scientists to effectively work together uh, and integrate uh, predictive capabilities into, into applications. And then next, we have natural language classifier. And this um, actually allows you to um, process natural language um, and use machine learning techniques. And it then assigns custom categories uh, to inputted text. So for example, if you submit a question and the service will then return keys to the best matching answers or next actions for your application. Then we have natural language understanding and you can use that to uh, process uh, natural language and it will then extract uh, metadata from content. So metadata can be things like concepts or entities, keywords, categories, sentiment, emotion, relations. And you can then um, use that to um, apply custom annotation models develop using say Watson Knowledge Studio and it can then identify industry or domain uh, specific entities and relations within uh, within the, the, the source that you're providing to it. Next we have Personality Insights and uh, what Personality Insights does is it will take some, some text or a Twitter feed or basically something that, that uh, people have created or a person has created and it will then give you some insights back after, after Personality Insights has analysed it it will give you some uh, some insights back as to um, as to the, the the kind of personality that's actually written that text. Then we have speech to text. So speech to text is a powerful um, tool which allows you to effectively speak to an application, and that speech is then uh, converted into text. So um, so there's different ways of using that. You can either um, you know you can you can note things. So you can talk to 
um, talk to your computer and it will then create a text file and output a, a transcript of what you've been, uh, been speaking. The other thing you can use uh, it for is to um, create um, speech enabled applications. So for instance, you might speak to an application, uh, speech to text will then uh, convert that into text and then you can use that text as the command into your, into your application. Then you've got text to speech. So uh, again, it's, if you create some text, um, it will then uh, convert that into speech. So, um, so again, if you use that in conjunction with speech to text in an application, then uh, what you can uh, do is actually have your application output something in text and instead of just putting it onto the screen, it can also uh, talk to you. Uh, or again, you can create um, applications that, that actually have speech embedded into them. So um, using those together is really powerful, but again, uh, using them separately is also powerful too. Tone Analyzer um, basically takes, takes input. So uh, again, it's normal, it, it will be text. Um, and then it will use um, linguistic analysis, as it says there, to actually detect the tone of it. So, so um, it will detect the language, it will detect the emotion, um, and it will then decide whether or not, you know, something, it may, maybe it sounds angry or maybe it sounds very happy, uh, maybe it sounds indifferent. So it will, basically you can put some uh, text into Tone Analyzer and it will analyze it for you and then it will give you the, the kind of like the motive state of the, of the text that you've supplied it. And next we have visual recognition. So visual recognition is a very powerful tool. So again, this is where um, you're, you are showing a, a, a showing a picture or an object uh, to the visual recognition application and uh, what it will then do is process that image and then come back and tell you what is in that image. Okay, next we have voice agent with Watson. Again, this is a really powerful tool. So this actually, um, if you're running call centers, you can, you can deploy this into your call center and um, you, the, the, uh, the, the voice agent with Watson can then uh, listen to customers' calls and then respond to them using natural language. So again, a really powerful tool. Uh, and a way to very quickly respond to customers that are maybe calling your, your call center. And then we have uh, what's an open scale. And this is a, actually a really, really important tool uh, because it allows you to um, get some visibility uh, into how your AI is actually being built and used and, uh, and actually delivers return on investment as well. Uh, there's also some really important bias detection and mitigation tools in here as well. So you can actually detect when your AI systems are maybe developing unfair outcomes um, at runtime based on uh, you know, different fairness attributes, uh, which are actually determined by the business as well. So this is a really important uh, tool because it will um, you know, build, it helps build trust and transparency in your AI. Uh, it also allows you and, and enables you to actually explain the, um, the, the recommendations that your AI has actually been making too. Okay, so let's move on to analytics. So first of all, we have Analytics Engine, and this is a uh, this is a framework that allows you to quickly and rapidly deploy Hadoop and Sparks analytics ap applications. So again, traditionally those are quite big and heavy um, applications to deploy on site, but you can do this with the elasticity and uh, and and the and the, the cost that, of, of cloud. Uh, we then have Big Insights for Hadoop, but I'm not going to linger on that because it's actually one of the services that's currently being deprecated. So that may well not be in the catalog for much longer. We then have IBM Cognos dashboard embedded. So if you want to um, put um, Cognos dashboards into your application, so Cognos reporting dashboards into your application, the, again, this is a service which, uh, which allows you to, uh, to very easily do that. Next, we have information server, and this is uh, an IBM Infosphere information server in the cloud. So if you're into uh, IBM Infosphere, then this is a service for you. Okay, next up we have Master Data Management or MDM, and this is a way to actually pull together um, lots of disparate data sources um, into one, I guess, golden record. So um, it's really good if you, especially if you've got data across a hybrid computing environment. And then next up we have Streaming Analytics. So Streaming Analytics is a service for ingesting and uh, actually analyzing data that is coming in on a, a near time or near real time or even real time data sources. So again, if you're doing things like uh, the Internet of Things, for example, then quite often what you'll see is uh, streaming analytics teamed up with the Internet of Things, where your things are actually sending uh, constant streams of data, and uh, streaming analytics is then reading that data and making sense of it and creating actions out of that data. 
Okay, so let's go and lastly look at blockchain. And blockchain is, uh, if you don't know what blockchain is, um, it's a way of um, having a, a ledger, which is a shared ledger. So basically, you can um, you can better uh, secure supply chains and, and transactions through a supply chain. So uh, the IBM blockchain platform is a, is a bit of an industry leader. So this actually allows you to uh, build your blockchain networks very far, very 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 quickly. Uh, and it's got all the tools in there for a, for a seamless experience. And that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in finding out when new videos are added to the series, then please take time to, um, to subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, then uh, you can always leave a comment. But in the meantime, thanks once again, and uh, we'll see you next time.